Voltage is a tricky thing. Sometimes it works in ways you don't quite expect. If you've been doing electronics for a long time, I'm sure it's a lot more obvious to you. Perhaps you even find it intuitive. But to those of us just learning, there are a few surprises in store. So there are things called JFETs that I will get into in a future video, but they're the next form of transistor from BJTs. So you know on a BJT how you have to forward bias your base to emitter junction on an NPN in order to get the whole thing to conduct. Well, you do something similar on a JFET. On an N-channel JFET, you bias one of its junctions to turn it off. It's normally on, you bias the junction to turn it off. Here's the trick though. You have to do it backwards. So you'll have, let's say five volts down to zero volts across one side, and then five volts to zero volts going on the other side. So you have one point that's at both five and zero volts. And here's where we remember that voltages are differences. There is not literally a voltage at a point, we just mean that in reference to the zero. But what if we have more than one zero? So let's say I have a power supply and a resistor and an LED, and now the LED is shining nice and pretty. But let's say for whatever reason, we have a spot. We have a spot right here. This spot could be a component, it could be a device, it could be anything. But for whatever reason, I need to run voltage through this the other way, through this spot. Well, let's say we have another resistor and another LED, but let's say we want it to go the other way. Let's do it in reverse. So let me take power supply and split it. So we'll go from the negative through the spot, through there and out, back around to the positive. What a mess. Well, in principle, it should work, shouldn't it? We're going from positive through here, through the positive of the LED, and then we have the positive through here to the positive of the LED, both back to the negative power. Now, any enterprising soul is going to immediately see why this will actually work, because here we have a path positive to negative, oops, that doesn't work. So this is gonna suck away all the power and it's just gonna turn off. But what if we had a different voltage source? So let's say we put our magic spot right there. This is the spot that we want to have cross voltages through for whatever reason, such as a JFED base. Perhaps right now you think I'm just insane, but when we get there, I'll show you why this is actually useful. So let's say we have our power. There's one and a resistor and an LED. And then over here, I'm going to have the power up here, then a resistor, then an LED. Let's compress this a bit since I have too much crap in the way and I can't stand back as far as I need to. So how's this gonna work? Well, first of all, connect through there. Let's say we do that. Good so far, just goes through the LED and lights it. But then let's say we do this. And in fact, let me go ahead and make this a different color, which hopefully everyone can see. Let's say we have this. Now, once again, what do we have? We have positive through a resistor, through the anode to cathode, through here back to negative. Nice complete circuit. Then over here, positive through here, through resistor, anode to cathode, into the negative. Both of those work fine. But here we have the same problem again. Here's the positive of this power directly connected to the negative of that power. But these are two separate powers. Remember that voltage is always a difference. Furthermore, what causes voltage? Power supply has charges, positive and negative. More electrons on one end than there should be, not as many electrons on the other end as there should be. These together create a voltage, a push, a pull, in effect. So you've got a push here, which does nothing until it connects up the electric field, all right? Electric field causes electricity. So you get the negative field spreads this way. Okay, here's a junction. Positive field spreads this way through, through, through. Here's a junction, they meet up, and now you've got a circuit. Same here, you've got this spread and that spread. But what would it be if we looked at the electric field as this positive spreading to this negative? We have no idea. What are these charges? We know that this is five volts, but there could be many, many different distributions of charges that cause that five volts. And we normally don't care, it doesn't matter whether this is a battery or a switching power supply or somebody rubbing their hair with their hand and zapping something and getting five volts for a millisecond, microsecond, nanosecond. Actually, it'd be much more than five, but you get the point. So these charges could be anything. So the positive terminal here, the negative terminal there could be any number of voltages. It could be zero, it could be 800 for all we know. Well, doesn't that cause problems? Well, no, because the other ends are still seeking out. Imagine that we have a certain amount of positive pull 
here at this junction. We have a certain amount of positive pull here, a certain amount of negative push, a certain amount of negative push, all at the junction. Forget the components, we're just establishing the fact that there is a total voltage across the circuit. So we have two pushes and two pulls. On their own, a push and a pull balance to a voltage, push and a pull balance to a voltage. They're balancing there too. If one of them doesn't balance, then we have nonsense. It's just like Kirchhoff's current law. Current in and current out must be equal. Otherwise Otherwise, something's going off into the neither or appearing from thin air. The same way you have to have the same currents going in and out, you have to have the same pushes and pulls in effect from the charges going in and out. So what happens is, at this junction, there is a push from the negative side and a pull from the positive side, and those two together will balance across the charge of the power supply. And this one, the same thing. If these don't go that way. Let's say they don't. Let's say for a split second they're pulling and pushing in weird ways and it's not balanced. That is a high energy state. The universe does not like to be in high energy state. The universe wants equilibrium. That's why bubbles are round. So what happens is it equalizes. You're going to have too much pull left over in this junction and it's going to get sucked from somewhere else. I'm simplifying, I'm overviewing here of physical details, but I'm trying to get across the point that there is an equilibrium here that balances itself, just like Kirchhoff's current law. That's why it works. Because even though they could crisscross any doggone way they want, they won't because that would take energy to force it to be that way. If it ends up that way, some other state is going to be easier for it to be in, quote unquote, easier, and it will tend towards that. The same way if you lift something up and let go of it, it's going to fall. The same way if you connect two ends of a battery, there's going to be current flow instead of it just sitting there. Anytime there is a lower energy state, a, an easier, a calmer way to be, as we might say, the universe will make that happen. And it's the same here. If this were not perfectly balanced, then it will equilibrate to be perfectly balanced and it will magically work. There won't be a short circuit because if this pushes too much through the one end, the pull is going to be more forceful or however you want to look at it, and it's going to balance out. A quick run through with Kirchhoff's voltage law. Well, let's see. If we start here and we go through here, here and here, well, that's a loop. It's a closed loop. So we have a voltage gain and a voltage drop. That has to be zero. So we know, according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, that as if this weren't here at all, if we go around this loop, we have a plus five, a minus, let's say two, so this will be a minus three, plus five, minus three, minus two equals zero. We didn't even have to touch this side. So anytime we go around this loop, it's gonna be zero. Same here, plus five, well, let's go the correct way. We could say minus three, minus two, plus five. You could go the other way, just swap the signs. So this side ended up being zero. We didn't have to go over there. Now, what if we did? Well. That's a zero, 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 zero. It all adds up to zero no matter how many times we go around because we have to end up here. What if we start here? Well, we can go around to here and then we can do whatever we want, but everything we do, every loop is gonna be a zero until we finally have to go around here and close it off. But that was a loop, so it's zero. And in a more complicated circuit, you're gonna have more interacting effects, but the same thing will happen. It'll balance. Two power supplies that don't share a common ground. You notice the negative terminals don't touch. Their positive terminals don't touch. It's a negative and a positive connected to a negative and a positive. Pushes and pulls opposing. That's why it works. So let's actually do it. So I have here a 9 volt wall wart with a nice little breakout plug so I can get it into my breadboard. Make sure you get the positive and negative in the correct spots. Positive, negative. So we'll measure. If we measure across these two terminals, 9.21 volts. Right about in there. A little bit over. Better over than under. So now let me turn on my power supply. We'll set that at 5 volts. We'll go ahead and get it active. Let's give it a max of 20 milliamps. So that's in there too. So we can confirm, if we want, that this power supply is 5 volts. So one is 9 and one is five, they're not even the same value. So I will now get two resistors and two LEDs. Let's have two 1K resistors, 1000 ohms, right there in the breadboard, and let's do two LEDs. Let's do a blue and let's do a red. So let's see what kind of current we should expect from these. So if I go from positive into a resistor, out of the resistor over this LED into the negative, it lights. This one lights up as well. So now we know all our parts are good. So now let's measure the current. So I'm going to connect my probe from my multimeter through here to measure the current. Through the LED, we're getting 2.16 milliamps. That says five. I just did a little testing. It's just a cheap Chinese power supply. 
that can't do the current very accurately. This makes sense because we've got five volts. We're going however many volts, let's say three over this blue LED because they usually take more. So that leaves about two volts over a 1K resistor. Divide two by a thousand, we get about two milliamps. So this is what we should expect, and that is spending less money on a power supply. But it works. Let's use the nine volt power supply. Let's go from the nine volt positive through a resistor, through the red LED, and then out of it, through to the negative of the nine volt. And we're getting about seven. Again, the red is usually dropping about two, two and a half. So nine volts down to seven, divide by a thousand, seven milliamps, it's about right. So let's remember that we're getting about two on the blue and about seven on the red. So now let me hook it up crosswise from positive of the five volt into that hole. That's our sheared hole. In fact, let me use this power trace. So it'll be the positive power trace there so I have more room. So from positive five volts into a sheared trace through resistor, through the LED, and back out to the negative of the five volts and it lights up. The other one does not. Now the positive from the nine volt, not to the sheared spot, not to the sheared spot, but into the resistor. Then from the resistor to the LED, the LED, the red one, to the sheared spot, and it actually comes on super, super dimly. There's a little crosstalk there. You probably can't even see it. Very, very slight. There's a little crosstalk there, but if we go from the shared spot over here to the nine volt negative, all of a sudden it comes on normally. So I've got the positive of the five volt connected directly to the shared spot and then the load, the positive of the nine volt to the load and then the shared spot. So we can see there is a wire coming out of the shared spot into the negative of the nine volt, but into the positive of the five volt. And you may notice that still says five. Let's actually measure. So my probes from my meter, let's replace a wire. So we'll go from the shared spot of the blue, positive of the five volt, and we're getting about two milliamps, just like we should be, with both of these on with different power supplies. What about the other way? Put that wire back right where it was. Now, I'm going to replace the negative wire, the negative of the nine volt, and accidentally unplug everything. The negative of the nine volt wire, so this is the current being measured from the shared spot, to the nine volt, seven, just what we should be getting. It has equilibriated. It's as if these two weren't touching at all. When the wires aren't completely connected right, when the electric fields can't establish themselves properly, those electric fields from the one that is connected properly push and pull and try and struggle to balance it somehow and they find their lowest energy state, which in this case resulted in this LED lighting super, super dimly, just because the negative of one is not the same charge of the negative of the other. So there was a small, tricky voltage. But when everything is connected together and they have the freedom to push and pull to themselves without interference, it's as if they're not even touching at all. And we have voltage going in two different directions at the same time. And just for completeness sake, we could go ahead and do this the way it won't work. So let's go from positive to the shared rail, from there through a resistor, through a resistor, LED, and LED out to negative. And then just like before, I'll connect the positive rail, this time not to the shared spot, but to the load. So I'm hooking up exactly as before, only with one power supply. So now we go through a load, through a resistor, through an LED, and now we're going to come out into the shared spot and all of a sudden, nothing happens. Let's finish shared spot to negative, short circuit, obviously. So all of the current is going through the shared spot directly between the positive and negative terminals. So that's using less than a tenth of a volt to do it because there's probably three ohms of resistance. Exact same wiring, exact same wiring, except coming out of the same power supply instead of two. It's like magic. Perhaps I harped on that far too long. It's just fascinating to me because my reaction when I first saw these diagrams showing you hooking up different voltages to the same spot was something like this. Uh? So this is what it's like to learn electronics on your own with no teacher other than the internet and whatever you can get your hands on. You'll be going through an explanation of something that the person explaining takes completely for granted and says, we'll hook it up this way and it works. And then all of a sudden you've spent three days gone on a complete tangent learning about electric fields again. I'm not a teacher. I'm a bus driver with just a, a camcorder, a little lapel mic on a ripped apart headphone, and Wikipedia. So now that I've talked your ear off, it's time to go learn something else. And while I do that, I'll be seeing you.